Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to write, how to implement a stack data structure with the help of Python and object-oriented programming. So let's get to it. The file is going to be called stack.py and the class's base object is going to be an object. This is good because it will inherit some functions which we can reuse for our own purposes. So we will have an init function which is going to get one argument which is going to show us the size, the maximum size of the stack. The base data structure for this is going to be a simple list We are going to have a stir function which will return us the elements of the stack joined with the generator function or underscore in Q reversed. So this is how you create a list reverse. If you have, let's say, uh, a list which looks like this, shoot. If you call the function on this list, then this is going to create a reversed version of the list. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is going to be how it, this is going to show us the order in which we can access the elements of the stack. And we need an iter function which is going to give us the elements of the stack. <sighs> in a reversed order with the yield. The yield is a non-blocking return function. So what kind of functions do we need to implement a stack? There are at least one, two, three, four functions, five which we need. <laughs> So the first one is the peak. The peak will show us the topmost element in the stack. But in order to do this, we should check if our stack is empty. And this can be checked if the length of the self dot underscore q variable is zero because if it's zero then we could return let's say false and before that say that the stack does not contain any elements and there is nothing to be Okay, otherwise we should return with the last element of our stack. This means that if our stack looks like this, don't let the order confuse because this is the topmost element which can be accessed uh, the soonest or earliest and this is the last element. Then if we call the fun call the peak function, then it will return one. Okay, so the next function is the is full because if the length of our stack is equal to the maximum length which is allowed, then our stack is full, so we return true. Otherwise, we return false. 
The next function we need is the is empty. Because if the length of our stack equals to zero, then our stack is empty. Otherwise, it is not. We could define if we want, let's say, a size function, but that would not be really that would not really make too much sense because the stack was created with a specific size. But if you want to support other, let's say, developers reusing our code who do not know maybe the size of the stack, then we could say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could say that we def we override the LAN built-in function, and this should return the cell max, which will be the maximum size of our stack. But if we want to return the currently used size of the stack, then we could return this, <coughs> the actual size of our stack. So the two most important functions are pop and push. The pop function means that we want to remove something from our stack, which is the topmost element. So how do we remove the topmost element from our stack? stack. First, it has to be checked if the length of our stack or the size of our stack is zero, because if it's zero, then we say the stack is empty. There is nothing to remove. We should remove the we should remove the last element, which is uh, we should uh, call the remove function, which will remove the element pointed by the index and the index points to the last element, so we remove the topmost element from our stack. And we will return true. Okay, then we need a push function, which will get an argument, which is the item with the, we want to push onto the stack. So how can we push something into the onto the stack? We can push it only if the stack is not full. So we should check if the size of our stack, the current size, equals to the maximum size. Because if it equals, or we should check the less. It's almost the same. It's uh, better to check if it's less, because when it becomes uh, equal, then the size of the stack will become greater than the maximum allowed size. So if we check if it's less, then this will, uh, this will work. So we should check if the actual size of our stack is less than the maximum size. And if it's less, then we should we should add the item and return true. Otherwise, we should let the user know that the stack is full. Can cannot add new elements.
this has to be saved and now it should be checked if we can work with this class which was just defined so in order to use this class which was defined in a dot pi file then it has to be imported and anyone can import a python file as a module and reuse the classes functions whatever written in that in this way first the os and the sys module has to be imported after that the sys.pass.append should be called with the os that get cvd appended with the backslash test and if someone prints the sys.pass then we can see that I have just added I have just added the current working directory where the script was saved to the path variable and now if I write that from stack import stack I can create a stack with the size of 5 I can push some elements into the stack and print the contents of the stack and peek into the stack and pop some elements from the stack and if I peek again I should see the three if I print again then I should see that the four is removed so it seems to be working fine. Now let's write something a little bit more complicated. We should say that while the stack is not empty, then we should check the topmost element and after that pop. And let's see if it's working. Hooray. And now <coughs> we can see that our stack is empty. I hope you liked it and it was informative for you. And subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.